Microphones and masks don't always go well together. <clears throat> we are here today for a very special person and for a very special purpose, because we've come today to thank God for the life of David Callender, David whom we've known, David whom we've loved. We've come to pay our respects and to say our farewells. And even in these difficult times, it's good that we take this time out. It's good that we make time for David today. David had a long and full life. He was 91 years of age. And so we come knowing him in different ways. We've had relationships with him in different ways. He was a devoted husband and father, a father-in-law, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, a brother, an uncle, and a good and true friend. And we've come today to support those who were closest to David as well. We think particularly of his sons, Gerald and David. We think of their families. We think, too, of the grandchildren and great-grandchildren, all of the wider family and friends. And we ask that God would hold them and keep them today and every day. And it's good and right that we're here in this place. For David was baptized here. David was married here. David was a member here. And more importantly for someone like myself, he was an attender here. We have many members that we don't see except for Christmas or maybe Easter. David wasn't one of those kind of members. David would come when he was able. This is where he came to meet with God. And that's important too, because we're here in the sight of God today. The one who knows us better than any other. The one who knows how we feel and more importantly, understands how we feel. So he's best placed for getting us through today and seeing us into tomorrow and leading us onwards and into the future. Now, we're not allowed to sing in the church at the moment, but we can listen to a hymn. There's a couple of hymns on the sheet, so we're going to listen to the first one, We Plough the Fields and Scatter, a hymn that talks of God's provision, but also what a brilliant hymn and a mark of respect for someone who was a grain merchant.
So let's talk to God. Let us pray. Loving God, you love us with an everlasting love, a love that is stronger than death and a love that reaches into eternity. And you promised that you would always be with us, and so we hold on to that promise today, and we ask that we would indeed know your presence. For you made us not for darkness and death, but for life with you forever. Help us now to listen to your word and take its reality to our hearts. Help us to understand the meaning of eternal life and to receive your comfort. Help us to feel your hand upon us and know the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. David lived a long and full life, and for that we are grateful. And yet it doesn't make today any easier. And it's because of the way that we see death, we see it as the end, it's final. The Bible, however, tells us the reality is different, that we go on and into eternity. We've just celebrated Christmas, celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's his experience, the message that he taught us of love, the way that he touched us with God's love, the way that he died and rises again opens that gateway to everlasting life for all to follow. In fact, he goes further and says, I'll come and take you to myself. So I'm going to read two short passages from the scriptures just now. Both of them are the words of Jesus himself. And this is what he says. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never turn away. I have come down from heaven to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. It is his will that I should not lose even one of those he has given me, but should raise them all up on the last day. For it is my father's will that everyone who sees the son and has faith in him should have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Jesus also said these words. He said, set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. There are many dwelling places in my father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you. For I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way I am taking, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Peace is my parting gift to you, my own peace, such as the world cannot give. So set your troubled hearts at rest and banish your fears. Amen. It has been very difficult during this time of COVID restrictions for people to come and to come along to the funeral. But because of the technology that we have nowadays, it doesn't mean to say that not everyone can take part. For example, David's son, David, who is in Canada, can't be here with us today, but he can leave a message for us. So we're going to look at this just now. Good afternoon. It is with a heavy heart that I am joining you this afternoon for this celebration of my father's life. This celebration is a much different event from the one I envisaged due to COVID-19. The travel restrictions presently in place make it impossible for Linda and I to join you today. It is a somewhat strange experience to be delivering remarks but with no sense of audience reaction. Thank you to the Lawson Memorial Church and to the Reverend Dr. Karen Fenwick for the infrastructure to make it possible for this pre-recorded message to be shared with you today. Recent medical advice had been that father was reasonably healthy for a man in his 92nd year, but the circumstances could change rapidly. So it proved in December 19, 2020. Father did not succumb to COVID-19, but I believe that father was a victim of COVID-19 nonetheless. He entered his care facility in March of 2020 and for the intervening nine months was subject to the COVID-19 restriction protocols, unable to leave the building, constrained on opportunities for exercise, limited in the number and frequency of visits that he could receive, and was unable to receive continuing medical care for certain underlying conditions. 
That is why I say he was a victim of COVID-19. I wonder what Father would have thought about this service being handled as it is today. My belief that he would go with the flow. Father was a pragmatist and spent no time worrying about what might have been, nor what might have been preferable, but which was not achievable. He felt that it was up to each of us to keep departed one's memories alive by thought and remembrance. He felt that a funeral service was a step in the healing process and that it really didn't matter how it was conducted. My father was christened and married in the Lousen Memorial Church. His beloved wife Jean's funeral was held in the Lousen Memorial Church in 2014. So it is fitting that this service takes place at the Lousen Memorial Church and we are grateful that it is possible despite the restrictions. Irrespective of what has happened, my father had a long and happy life. Father was the last of his paternal and maternal grandparents' grandchildren to pass, and so was the end of a generation of calendars and calders. We also believe that he was the last of his class of 1946 at Forfar Academy to pass. I've had the opportunity to publicly thank my parents for their love and support several times over the years. My wedding to Linda in 2011, mother's funeral service in 2014, and Father's 90th birthday celebration in July 2019. I'd like to reaffirm the comments that I've made in the past. Gerald and I both benefited from supportive, caring, understanding parents whose relationship was an example to us both. We were both inspired and expected to succeed. No barriers were put in our way. We were given room to grow and mature. While my father was a father through my teens, as the years went by, the relationship developed into more of a friendship. He was supportive and loving, and he instilled a love of books and fine things. That's not to say that there wasn't the well-established Scottish reticence to give praise or be demonstrative about affection. Above all else, he was a wonderful husband and father, and then a grandfather, and now a great-grandfather. A fervent reader, father had a love of poetry and fiction of all types. His musical efforts reflected more diligence than talent, but playing the piano brought him great pleasure. A keen Scrabble player, his memory of words caused many references to the dictionary, but most challenges failed and he usually won. He had an interest and knowledge of local history. Born in Forfar on July 21, 1929, father was the first son of David Calder, grain merchant, and Georgina Calder. Father had three older sisters and one younger brother. Father's siblings all predeceased him. Father attended Forfar Academy. On leaving school in 1946, father went to Aberdeen University, where he graduated in 1951 with a Bachelor of Science, Agriculture. Father served his national service in the Royal Corps of Signals between 1951 and 1953 with the rank of Lieutenant. Following completion of his national service, father continued with the Signals Regiment in the Territorial Army, ultimately leaving in 1958 with the rank of Captain. Father really enjoyed his army service, except when he finally met a better boxer and ended up with a broken nose. Following the conclusion of his national service, Father returned to Forfar to join the family grain merchant business, John Guthrie Limited, to work with his father and brother John. On October 28, 1954, Father married Jean Stewart Kidd, who had been a classmate at Forfar Academy. Mother predeceased Father on June 12, 2014. Father and mother had two children, Gerald and myself. Gerald has two children, Louise and Russell. Louise and her husband, Martin Arnold, blessed father's life with his two great-grandchildren, Callie and Tommy. Father was an active member of the Forfar Round Table. Father was a long-standing member of Forfar Golf Club and served as the president in 1979 and served on the committee for many years and assumed various convenership roles. He also created and gifted to Forfar Golf Club the pin and thread art version of the Forfar Golf Club logo which hangs in the clubhouse. Father joined Forfar Golf Club on January 1, 1940, and at the time of his 90th birthday, was the oldest member of Forfar Golf Club still, play, still paying a playing membership. He had golfed well into his 80s. He was an enthusiastic golfer and encouraged both Gerald and I to love the game, and we golfed together frequently. He managed five holes with Gerald and I in July 2019 as part of his 90th birthday celebration. 
Father had a long-standing relationship with the Angus Show, and after serving as chairman in 1976, he became an honorary vice president of the Angus Agricultural Association. Over the years, father and mother travelled extensively, particularly to Canada and the US, to visit with me, and those trips continued into retiral. Over the years, we visited 7 out of 10 Canadian provinces and 14 out of 50 US states. Father and mother were also frequent visitors to Tenerife and mainland Spain, so much so that father taught himself the Spanish language. Father and mother were active members of both the Forford Bridge Club and the Brecon Bridge Club, and father continued to play bridge after mother passed. I have described certain attributes of my father. I may not have captured his essence. That begs the question, what sort of man was my father? I have noted that he was a pragmatist. I don't recall him ever bearing a grudge or treating anyone with disrespect. He gave without expectation of return. He was kind and had a good sense of humour. As a grain merchant, he knew that they were both good and bad seasons as the harvest varied and that one should plan accordingly. What was my father's philosophy of life? I believe that he had at least two which he mentioned frequently. Firstly, take care of yourself as good folk are scarce. Second, while one enjoys today, things can change and we may have to go back to old clothes and porridge. When I think of my father, I think of him as a successful entrepreneur, a golfer, a bridge player, a graduate of Aberdeen University, a voracious reader, a past president of Forfar Golf Club, a past chairman of the Angus Show, a captain in the Territorial Army, a keen traveller, a raconteur, a man blessed with a large family on both the calendar and called the limbs of the family tree, and a man with a keen interest and knowledge of local history. But especially today, I think of him as my father, and I know that he is gone, to be kept alive in our thoughts and hearts. Since December 19, Gerald and I have received many emails and phone calls from friends and family. Some of the friends only met my father a few times and in some cases only once. There was, however, a commonality of observations from these friends and family. They described my father as a gentleman with a constant twinkle in his eye. I can think of no better description of my father. He was a gentleman in the full meaning of the word, chivalrous, courteous and an honourable man. In conclusion, Linda and I wish that we could have been with you today because we love my father and we will miss him. A funeral is about being with the people who will also miss him and know that his was a life well lived. Thank you. So from David, who's over in Canada, to Gerald, who's sitting on the front row here. Gerald, you're allowed to take your mask off when you come up here. Hi everybody, thanks for being coming along. I'm not going to take up too much more of your time after David's speech, because David has captured the, the man my father was. For my part, I remember a kind, generous and honest man who was at his happiest when he was with other people. He was never nosy, but he was always genuinely interested in other people's lives and circumstances. He never took offence at other people's opinions and he was very keen to let other people know what his opinion was. He was a man whose ability at DIY was only eclipsed by his prowess with a putter, and he wasn't a very good putter. He never spoke to me about his funeral, and I don't know whether he ever gave it much thought, but I do know he would think of you all as his guests. After the hymns and prayers are over, I've no doubt he would view the most important part of any funeral as the get-together at the end, for a cup of tea, a sausage roll and a dram, when people could raise a glass and reminisce about him, but maybe more importantly, chat about themselves and the future. He'll be genuinely horrified that COVID-19 has prevented him from standing his hand for the last time. So when we meet again, in better times, when hospitality is open, I'd like to buy you all a cup of tea or an orange juice or a dram and we can think of him. I know that I will think of my dad often, with or without a dram. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald.
Let's talk to God once more. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that you are the very author of life and the giver of victory over death. You deliver our eyes from tears, our feet from falling, and our souls from death itself. We thank you for the gift of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, thus conquering death and sin for us and opening that gateway to everlasting life. Lord, we thank you for David, whom we've known and loved. We thank you for the fullness of his life, for his very essence and presence, for the person that he was to us, and for those many memories that he's left behind for us to cherish as we commend him into your care. We pray for his family, for his sons David and Gerald, their wives Linda and Wendy, grandchildren Louise and Russell, great-grandchildren Callie and Tommy, the family on whom David doted and loved. We pray too for wider family and friends. We pray for all of those who have been touched by David. And we ask that as their hearts feel heavy and empty, so we ask that you would fill that gap, that they would know that they're in, being held in the hands of their heavenly Father. May they know your presence and feel your love. Release them from any feelings of regret or guilt and help them instead to concentrate on the precious gift of love that they have shared. And as David lives on in your presence, may he continue to live in our hearts and our memories. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It was good to take time today, time for David. It was good to come together, even though we're sitting here like Johnny No Friends, having to stay two meters apart. It was good that we could take time to come and support David's family and come and pay our respects as well. And at the close of the service here, we're going to go and continue at Park Grove Crematorium. But first, we're going to close with a hymn that tells us of how, if we allow him to, God will lead us into today and tomorrow and forever. The Lord's my shepherd.
ask you to please stand for a blessing. So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.